Welcome to the Pantheon Parenthetical. My name is Lance Ash. This episode will be a little bit different because as far as I'm concerned, the um, ongoing narrative in the tiny community of Fig Pitch has come to a reasonable conclusion. Perhaps not satisfying to traditionally minded people, but it satisfies me. So I don't really have a, um, a worked out or thoroughly worked out um, theme for today's episode. I will merely say that um, my birthday is coming up at the end of November. Since I don't like surprises, I told my wife specifically what I wanted for my birthday, which is um, a copy of the Rammstein album Riser Riza, which will complete my um, collection of Rammstein's studio albums, and a copy of Andy Summers' 1988 solo album Mysterious Barricades. Well, she went ahead and ordered Mysterious Barricades and went ahead and gave it to me a couple of days ago. She said she was giving it to me in advance because it was a used uh, CD and she wanted to make sure that it worked. She got it through Amazon and although the seller listed it as used, the seller did not mention the fact that it was a cutout. Now for those of you who are too young to remember record stores, physical record stores, a cutout is an album that didn't sell very well, so they discounted it. And to show that it was discounted, they disfigure the album in a way. Um, When the cutout phenomenon first started, it was during the LP era, and they would cut a notch in the uh, sleeve or, or cover of the album. And um, when cassettes became the dominant form of recorded music, they would either punch a hole or melt a hole either in the spine of the case or on the front of the case, sometimes going so far as to make a hole in the actual cassette itself. Well, this, I think I've seen a cutout CD before, Um, but I haven't seen one in a long time, and this is the first cutout CD I've seen that was cut to this extent. Um, It's an actual, I'd say, close to half-inch gouge um, in the bottom of the uh, jewel case and they damn near came close to cutting the actual disc itself. Um, But I got a new jewel case, swapped it all out, it plays fine. Um, It is an all instrumental album, Um, very light, atmospheric music. Um, can't remember exactly, but it seems to me a good bit of uh, guitar synthesizer, which <clears throat> Andy Summers was using a lot back in those days. I love Andy Summers. I think he's a great guitar player. Um, the cover art is by a woman named Anne Zellbach. S-E-E-L-B-A-C-H. And I... I'm one of these people who finds the packaging of an album almost as important as the music itself. There are few, there are still a few purists out there who don't give a damn about the artwork, but I think it's integral to the album uh, presentation. Anyway, I really like the album cover art, and I looked up her work, and I was disappointed to find that. The rest of her work is nothing like that, really. I, I, I was hoping to find more pieces similar to this painting, which is called The Blue House. The, the house in question looks like a giant sheep or giant dog with a big window where the face would be. 
anyway, um, I'd love to see this work of art in person. I, I would imagine, I'd be willing to bet $5 that Andy Summers owns the work, owns the original. Um, <clears throat> so I'll probably get the Rammstein album on my birthday itself. Um, big fan of Rammstein. I don't know that I would go see them live because it would probably cost a hundred bucks and I'm not a big fan of live music anyway. Jimi Hendrix said that he wished that people who come to his concerts would just sit down on the ground, close their eyes, and listen to the music. But that advice has never been um, heeded. So I think that about brings us to the end of this episode. Don't know how the show is going to develop in future episodes, but we'll just see what happens. So thank you very much for listening.